you guys have been following along, I test fitted the new Cosmos Racing wheels on the front and we're going to need a 15 millimeter spacer to make sure that uh, we don't hit the Brembo brake caliper. So no problem, that's what I ordered from Z1 Motorsports. They are here, so we got the extended studs we're going to put in and the 15 millimeter spacers from Z1 and then this is just the, the stud installer tool. Uh, so that's kind of a project we got to take on this evening. So we got to pop these back. Uh, reinstall the new studs on the back side, pull them through to get them secured and and uh, into place. And also what I wanted to do is lower this thing probably maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch. So you guys know coilovers can seize up and cause problems and these are just kind of... I had I had pulled them out so I could re readjust preload and all that stuff and blah 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 and I raised them up a little bit because I was putting fender liners in and I didn't want anything to rub and turns out we're not having any rubbing issues so I probably could have just left it at the right height that it was at or maybe raised it only an eighth of an inch rather than a quarter of an inch or half an inch whatever the hell I did. So we got to drop it back down but nonetheless uh, we're getting rid of the old Odon, oh, Aodon, whatever the hell kind of wheels those are. So this gives us access then to the studs so we can pop them all out, pull them back in. Um, I should have just changed the wheel bearings while I was in here. There's not a lot of play, but there's a little bit of noise in it. It's, I don't know, it's just, it's not perfect. It's a little loud to pound on these tonight with everybody sleeping, so I'm just gonna get, get them all exposed, get the other wheel off, and I lubed them up a little bit just in case. Uh, rears, cross my fingers, knock on wood. Shouldn't have any problem getting the wheels off and putting the wheels on there tomorrow. We did get some spacers, some 25 millimeter spacers for the rear, because we went with a nine, so we went with a, a, an 18 by 9 and a half wheel squared, square wheel setup. We're going to do wider tire in the rear, uh, but because those are 10 and a half and those are pretty flush, we're going to push them out a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit more aggressive of an offset on the 9 and a half wheel. I think it's like a plus 10 or something, where these are plus 15. But again, this is like an inch wider wheel. So uh, we don't make up the difference there with the offset, but we'll push them out a little bit. Get them looking flush. I, I almost went with the 11 inch wheel, but those are 11 inch wide with a plus eight offset. So they would poke and I don't want, I don't want poke on this car. And I don't want to run a bunch of crazy camber because I want it to be functional on the road. And I just, you know, I'm not a big camera guy. So I want it to be flush, but I want it to uh, look good and be practical. I hate the idea of running a half inch or a full inch spacer back there, but it'll be fine. Try to keep this day rolling. On my way to see our buddy at Amazing Grace Tire, get these wheels and tires mounted and balanced and ready to go. Once I get them on the Z, then I can set that thing back down on the ground. Uh, we can check fitment a little bit and see what we can do to, to dial it in as much as we can in the garage without messing things up. Uh, probably just gonna take a, a coilover adjustment for, for the time being, I'm not gonna get too crazy. So I sure hope that uh, rear wheel tucks up and in there. Uh, we're running a 265 40 18, so and it's a federal, so they're known to be a little bit beefy. I'm getting some work done. I'm, try I'm trying not to look at them. They look good, but I, I want to look at them when I get them up on the car. That's it. I'm running out of time already this morning. The day is getting past me, so I got to get this done. We got one and a half left, and we'll head home. We got to get some stuff wrapped up. Okay, all finished up at Amazing Grace Tire. Did a fantastic job. Good dude there, great prices, and uh, always helpful to the channel. So no scratches on the new wheels. We got to get them home. We got to take care of the extended studs, Z1 wheel spacers, interior stuff, coil over adjustment. We got a lot of work to do. Detailing, washing, there's a lot to do. It's 11.15 in the morning. We can do it. All right, first things first, I'm going to get the rear wheels on because the coil overs are set properly for the rears. So that's not a problem. Uh, but first, I want to ceramic coat the inside. I like to do the ceramic coating, so we're going to get these cleaned up. Put the little, um, we'll use the hydro charge from Chemical Guys. This stuff actually works pretty good. Goes on nice and thin, wipes off easily, and it just allows you to clean your barrels a lot easier uh, down the road. When there's brake dust and stuff built up, it just sprays off rather than adheres. So I'm going to use this stuff right now. 
I actually went over it a little bit with mineral spirits first to make sure all the finger grease and stuff from the tire shop was off of it. And you just need a little bit of this actually, just a little, just a couple little lines. Seriously, it's all it takes. Get it all in one direction and then you can crisscross it to make sure you get even coverage. You can do like the whole hood of a car with just a couple little squirts like that. It truly doesn't take much. Opposite direction, adjacent direction, make sure you get even coverage. I love using this stuff on black cars and wheels too because it makes the black look really black. So the outside of the wheels are going to look sharp with this, but it actually gives it a nice protective coating too that lasts probably like four, five, six months on the wheels. All right, we got both of the barrels done. Once this dries up a little bit, you just let it sit for, I let it sit probably like 40 minutes or something. Then you buff it off. While the ceramic coat is drying on the wheels, I wanted to just adjust, check the preload on these rears. And sure enough, there was almost no preload on the spring. Uh, I broke them loose and I was nearly able to uh, twist this top ring by, my, by hand. Anyway. Uh, it took all the pressure off of the spring, turned this top collar as tight as I could get it with my hand, and then you bring this bottom collar up, and then holding this one still, tighten this, essentially moving it up the body of the, the threaded body here, compressing the spring. Normally you'd do about five millimeters, which is the thickness of the wrench. So you twist this one up the collar until you can fit the wrench between the two collars here. I went just beyond that, probably eight, maybe nine millimeters, uh, just to give myself a little additional preload. Uh, I like it, I think this car can benefit from it. And I've heard of others um, going as far as like a quarter of an inch of preload on the rears for these Zs. So I thought I would test it out and see what happens. So I'm gonna do the other side as well, uh, but I'm much happier now knowing that there's true a true preload setting set on these rear coilovers and I hope that makes a, a, a lot of difference here uh, in drivability and just overall sound. Hopefully we eliminate some of the racket from the rear. Like usual, old coilovers, these were seized up pretty good, but I just put the wrench on backwards and wedged it up against the uh, inner fender here and that was able to prevent this from turning while I tried to break this bottom ring loose, which I did. So I'm backing this all the way down and now see this turn is really easy. Now what I need to do is back this collar down until there's no pressure on the spring. So I'll spin it in the same direction. And it spins really easy, so there was like no tension on it at all. So, so there's no preload on here, there's no tension on here. You can see it's loose from the perch. The spring and the, this lower portion, this lower ring are actually kind of fused together with grime and gunk, so that's fine. There's no pressure on it. We'll just start working it up with our fingers. Again, don't worry about this bottom one right now. Tighten it as tight as you can get it with your fingers so it's pushing the spring up. So you're basically seeing how tight you can compress that spring with your hand. So there was not even close to this much on it originally. I was using my fingers to do it. Well, that's about as tight as I can get it. Raise this spring all the way up. Now you keep this lower ring right here, use your fingers or whatever, and then the wrench again to raise this top one up. So normally that's about right. You can fit the wrench between them, it's about five millimeters. I'm gonna go almost double that. I did three twists like that, so. Yeah, maybe seven, eight millimeters. We'll do a little bit more. There, that's about right. Now, just tighten this all the way up and lock them down, going, you know, twisting them in opposite directions. So you're squeezing them tight so it's locked in place. That's the proper amount of preload. Nice.
they look sick and meaty as hell but I don't know about this she's sitting pretty low I don't know if they're gonna tuck up under there we're gonna have to be careful setting it down It is all coming together now, fellas. Big delivery we've been waiting on. Oh yeah. Extended lugs on both the fronts are completed. This is probably one of the most worthwhile tools ever. Sit in there and see how you like the seats, first of all. Look really clean. What'd you say? Look really clean. Clean, cool, 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 cool. Okay. All right. Race car-ish? Yeah, I feel very secure. <laughs> you disappeared. Feel very secure? Yeah. They fit you good. Like, I feel very safe. Well guys, we did it. I didn't know if we'd make it, but we got it done. It's like three o'clock in the morning. Cars and coffee is tomorrow. And we're not completely finished with the Z, of course, but we got enough done. We made a milestone as to where we can show it off in front of a bunch of people. I hope the turnout is huge. More importantly though, guys, of course, I wanna show the car to you. Put a lot of work in since Thursday. Again, it's three o'clock in the morning on Saturday. So uh, we got, the wheels done uh, and dialed in, different spacer in the rear end so the back wheels and tires fit a lot better than what you saw earlier in the video. Uh, we got ride height dialed in for perfect ride quality ride height. Uh, we're still going to lower it a bit in terms of practicality or, or, or kind of a racing setup. Uh, we got seats and harness bar and harnesses and we got some goodies under the hood done. Follow along on Instagram and, and of course here at YouTube as well to see what we got going on there. A couple little custom aluminum pieces. Uh, the bumper's on, the car is looking good, feeling good, sounding halfway decent, uh, but we're ready to sh show this thing off for now until we uh, really make some additional progress, but I just want to give another shout out to everybody that's partnered with me so far for this project. LRB Speed, Spinny Woosh, Corbo Racing, uh, Corbo USA, of course, Cosmos Racing, Wheels, 
Um, uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting more, but please, guys, everything will be linked in the description below. Hit those links, check these people out, and see uh, if there's anything you might be interested in for your particular vehicle. All of them are great pe people, great companies, uh, great products. Uh, highly, highly recommended. So check them out. Let them know Speed Culture Studio sent you. I appreciate it. Let's get to the show and reveal this thing. Hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I drive. wasn't a lot of room at Cars and Coffee to reveal the Z after the new wheels were put on. We figured out the fitment and we got that all situated. So I want to show you some shots right here. Check it out. just an eight millimeter spacer I could probably do ten but I think if I lower it a little bit maybe another eighth of an inch will really be dialed I think it's perfect I think I can come down maybe an eighth of an inch in the front as well but I think fitment is on point with this thing I really like um, chemical guys tire gel but because it, it's super glossy but it doesn't last, it's water-based. It doesn't last if it rains or gets wet at all. Shine is gone. And the next other thing is, it slings everywhere. It is ridiculous, it slings everywhere. At least it's easy to wash off, but I hate sling. That's the problem with tire shine. Uh, there's only one kind I like, one kind I use, and I'll be going back to it. with these black wheels but we got this new front bumper and it's time to decide 
what color scheme we're gonna go with. I, I, I've had something in my mind this whole time, ever since I got this car. And I've set it up with some of the accents um, that I wanna go with based on what the overall color is gonna be. But I'm sort of curious to know what, what color scheme you guys uh, would like to see on the car, what your thoughts are, what would be ideal to you. Again, I, I have a, a scheme in mind and there's a couple other details that I need to work through and, and work out. But overall, I sort of have a, a general feel, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below what color you'd like to see on the Z. More stuff coming, guys. I'm, I'm pumped. This is going to be great. Um, big change, and we're going to do it relatively soon. This 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 project is moving fast. This is the fastest I've ever kind of moved through something with wheels and interior pieces, and et cetera, et cetera. So stick around. I appreciate the continued support. We'll see you next.